And welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. Last weekend, my wife and I went to once again to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. This is the 2015 one, and uh, this is our third time going, and wow, what a difference a year makes. Uh, I've got uh, footage on my uh, channel from last year of what uh, the 2014 Portland Retro Show was like. But check this out. This is the first time we've ever had to line up to buy tickets. That's the line right there. And there were people everywhere. This isn't even getting into the event just yet. Um, you'll see here, I, I uh, at one point saw Gamester81 taking photos with fans. There's some folks here doing interviews. And um, over to the side here, we got uh, Johnny Millennium, the happy console gamer, and Alpha Omega Sin with a lineup of people waiting to get their autographs. So it's really changed. Uh, the last two years we went, it was in the other part of the convention center. But this year, they actually moved the event to, I don't remember which hall this is, E and F or something? Anyway, uh, it's way bigger. I hear it was one and a half times the floor space one and a half times the number of vendors and something in the order of 5,000 tickets were sold so yeah it is a much much bigger event this year than even just last year um, as an example I uh, I bumped into Johnny Millennium just uh, browsing through some cartridges and he was chatting with me and stuff and this year you, you got a lineup if you want to get his autograph so that's great for him um, the event a lot of fun um, i got, got a great amount of stuff. I mean, uh, I've already shown my pickups video, uh, some of which I got in there inside that uh, caged off area. No, those people aren't in a zoo. They haven't been bad. Uh, that was just one vendor had decided to display all of their cartridges and items in a, a nice sort of rack that you could select from. Got some really, really cool items. Three virtual boys in a row there. That's unusual. Um, this is just a few sample shots of what kinds of bins of t different types of cartridges you can find, discs, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, I just wanted to show just, uh, I mean, a lot of the footage I'm showing is of other th parts of the event, the, the kinds of hardware you can get. But I wanted to establish, yeah, you can get yourself a lot of games here from every generation. I mean, there's stuff from the early 70s right up to, um, as per my uh, pickups video that I did, right up to the PlayStation Vita. I mean, every generation is represented in uh, huge numbers. And there's even a lot of artwork there. That, that was the, um, the real appeal, especially for my wife. Um, yeah, you can buy cartridges and games online, and you can see interesting things like um, Prince of Persia being played on a very, very old portable computer. That was pretty neat. Uh, but it's it's all that extra stuff that you don't see at most events. Um, and of course, there was Gamester81. Uh, he was there uh, selling a lot of his uh, new games that he's been working on with uh, a company. And um, as I say, I saw him earlier in the event uh, just standing with a bunch of fans taking photographs. So he's uh, he's one of the big YouTube names that showed up there. As I say, yeah, lots of nice artwork. Um, variety of things. Like you even had these plushies here that were... Um, I don't know what characters they represent, but... And there were even modern games that uh, I guess hadn't come out yet. This looked like it was an indie title that uh, people were trying out. To, you know, come and check out our game and maybe buy it on Steam or wherever this is going to be available. And this I hadn't seen before. It's a, an Atari Jaguar with a rotary controller for playing uh, Tempest 2000. Yeah, lots of lots of really old PC hardware there too. And old console hardware. Once again, they broke out the shag carpeting and the uh, retro looking couches and the old wood grain TVs so you can sit there and play your Atari games or on the other side NES games. Speaking of Atari, uh, this is the Atari Age booth. Uh, I uh, went up and actually met some of the members there that I've spoken to for years. 
Uh, I even got to shake hands with Albert, who kind of runs the uh, the forum. And um, yeah, they had some great new titles that are coming out soon or were available to buy there. Um, a particular one of interest to me was Circus Age Atari. I love uh, Circus Atari. And this one uh, that they were having for the Atari Age booth actually represented the balloons and everything else in the game. Uh, I think it was just a demo. You couldn't actually pick it up. But, but there were a lot of really great titles there. So yeah. Uh, Atari Age, uh, definitely a booth that is uh, a must visit anytime you go there. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a member. And just next to the Atari Age booth was uh, a fellow who's also a member who goes by the nickname Wybot. He had his uh, booth there with a whole bunch of items. I was very tempted in some of the things he had for sale. I think that's where I got my Umbrella Chronicles for the Wii, actually. And uh, if you happen to notice on the table there, he even had a Cosmic Clash for sale. Speaking of other items that were a little um, unusual, you had some handhelds, and uh, that's one of those robots I think Nolan Bushnell made. And there's even my... A wing calculator that's what it originally looked like I've done a video of it uh, when I talked about the a wing in my collection and yeah that's that was for sale there I was amazed I've never seen that anywhere else and of course you had some very very cool random stuff this was uh, a collection of um, very nice glasses and decanters that had uh, various gaming characters etched on them it looked fantastic and uh, even the guy who um, did his uh, shadow box artwork with the pixelated vi various video game characters, he was there. Again, the artwork, absolutely fantastic at this event. I mean, uh, some of this stuff, had I had a little higher budget, I definitely would have been picking up, especially that hoodie. And as big of a Star Wars fan as I am, uh, the Slave Leia body pillow didn't quite make it home. Anyway. Nearby, some guys were selling uh, various cartridges for and game discs for things like um, uh, PAL region, Super NES, and also uh, Sega Saturn. Uh, and these are the kind of guys that had, remember in my uh, pickups video I talked about the cellophane wrapped Rage Racer? That's kind of what these guys are selling and they were in really pristine condition. I mean, the, uh, total props for, for selling things that were practically mint. Uh, nearby there was another fellow who um, was part of a local costume making uh, group and uh, he had some great looking uh, Halo items there that were... Uh, handmade and F fantastic quality. There always seems to be a tendency for vehicles to show up at the Portland Retro Show. Last year it was Kit from uh, Knight Rider and this year the angry video game nerd brought his van along. Not sure what that was all about but it was, I know he's done a movie where he goes on the road so I'm guessing this is the van he drives around in and it's even kitted out with uh, a gaming system inside. You could have gone in and had a few games. And yeah, just all kinds of random items. This was a pinball table somebody had restored. It was part of the Portland Recycle Gaming uh, Group. And um, I think that might make a nice little uh, item to have on your wall, maybe. And nearby was the immortal John Hancock, as uh, Metal Jesus Rocks likes to introduce him. He had a whole bunch of different things for sale and uh, was a very, very popular booth. As you can see here, they had some nice custom painted N64s, NESs, you name it. Um, at one point you're even going to see there's an Atari 2600 that's uh, painted really, really nicely. If I didn't have these items already, I definitely would have uh, picked some of these up because just the artwork alone looked fantastic. But what was of much greater interest to me in John's booth was a Sega Saturn. There it is there. Um, he wanted uh, 70 bucks for it and it said it was modded uh, with the mod chip there. And now I did ask, does that mean it'll play anything? And because I know you can have it modded to play um, either games you've burned on disc or you can have it modded to play Japanese games. And the fellow, uh, John wasn't around when I asked that question and the guy who was there didn't quite know the answer so I passed on it, but maybe someday. 
Speaking of discs, a bunch of uh, vinyl there, and even an Ouya for sale. This this um, shelf unit was very interesting. You had an Ouya down there, and you also had the very first video game console I ever owned. Now, I know it as the Unitrex Video Pro, but the label said something else on it, uh, something or other 1000. Here's another shot of the rest of that shelf. We got PS2, and right at the top was actually a Steel Battalion controller. I was hoping to play Steel Battalion at this show because we've got an Xbox now, but unfortunately it wasn't around. Now, um, toward this back area where this artwork was, um, you could actually see the rest of the convention hall. There's still room for them to expand, and they might next year. And then the garbage man came by, so I ran away. Now, that, uh, that's pretty much what was for sale as far as items and gadgets and gizmos. Um, the rest of the hall was actually full of games you could play. You had arcade machines and pinball machines and even uh, various retro consoles all hooked up. So I'm just going to pan across here and uh, show you some of the different machines. Um, the nice thing is as well, some of the um, licensed music that was blasting a lot during part of the event kind of um, it, it turned off for this section. And I figure, you know what, I've been talking for about 10 minutes now, so I'll just let you listen in on some of these machines. Uh, I'll make the odd comment here and there, but just take in some of this ambience. This was kind of adorable. I saw these three kids all playing three machines here, and they're just barely tall enough to even see them on it. Look at this. This is a giant X-Men uh, cabinet that uh, has two monitors inside of it and four, maybe five players can all stand in front of it. Like it's a huge machine. I remember those machines from uh, way back when. Only three people playing at this time. This is probably 
swap cycle from Namco, and I played this, I discovered this game on MAME once, and I thought, what the heck game is this? It looks really, really cool. I've uh, never seen an actual cabinet or an actual machine being played, and now that I see what all is involved, yeah, this is never going to work on MAME, but a uh, very, very cool little uh, machine where you kind of fly this uh, propeller bicycle thing through a variety of um, balloons and that. That was a really, really cool machine. Um, yeah, first time ever seeing one of those. And this is another machine, first time for me to ever see it. This is F0GX, the coin-operated arcade machine. Um, this is, uh, I I've heard about this, and I know of F0GX for the uh, GameCube. I seem to remember reading not too long ago, somebody had discovered the GameCube version that has the code of this coin-op machine inside of it. You have to put in some special, I don't know if it's like, uh, you have to actually hack the game in order to play it, or if you just put in a special cheat code or something, but it was pretty cool to see the actual machine. And yes, we even go so far back as Pong. No, do not adjust your set. That is wacko, and the cabinet is actually designed to look like that. And of course, we had a whole bunch of different pinball machines from different eras. These were really spectacular to see. And I didn't even have enough time at this year's event to play any of these, but uh, I think next year I might make a little more time, because to get that many pinball machines in one place is kind of weird. Now this was pretty cool. This is a project I've actually been thinking of uh, making at some point. A couple of LCD screens uh, connected with a PC or some kind of Raspberry Pi inside playing virtual pinball. Great idea. And uh, if you ever want to see what the inside guts look like, uh, this guy was actually trying to repair one. Along one line, we had a couple of guys repairing uh, America's Most Haunted by Spooky Pinball. This is actually a new machine. This came out in 2014. Maybe that's why um, these guys were actually repairing it. I didn't see them working on any other machines. But they got it working. This was interesting. This was actually a Yars Revenge arcade machine. Now, I tried looking this thing up. Um, I didn't know that there was actually an original coin-op of uh, Yars Revenge ever made. Uh, some people have 
uh, talked about making one, and maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is a mock-up somebody tried out with uh, clearly a 2600 inside. But I, had, I thought that was really, really cool. Hadouken for me? <laughs> you want to play? Sure. Awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> That's cool. there was also an entire console arcade area where uh, any number of consoles from N64s and televisions, uh, PlayStation 1s, Game Boys, you name it, they were all hooked up here. Uh, again, I was kind of hoping to see um, uh, Steel Battalion hooked up. I know it was last year, and since I could maybe get that for my Xbox, I wouldn't mind to give it a test track. Just beside these guys playing uh, drums was a Virtual Boy, and I wanted to try that out. But as you can see in the footage, um, only one of the two eyepieces was working, so lost that chance. Maybe next week. to round things out on the subject of the Xbox uh, they had a whole bunch of original Xboxes all networked together here so that people could play original Battlefront and Battlefront 2 it was pretty neat seeing all of these machines all working together uh, uh, hooked up and playing the same game that was really really cool I guess with the new Battlefront coming uh, there was a, a strong motivation to get people out there and play in it uh, but it was uh, it was pretty cool to see I'm assuming, at least, that's why all these Xboxes have got these strange orange flickers showing up on the front of them there. That's that's indicating that they're, they're networked together, right? I'm assuming so. I've never actually done it, but, uh, yeah, to see them all running around doing that from Battlefront, I thought that was pretty cool. And that's sort of the end of the show. You can see here the dealer room was all packed up, so everybody was out there on the pinball machines and the Pac-Man machines and the Donkey Kongs and the Asteroids and, and even on the N64s and the Intellivisions. I mean, that was that was a nice end to the day. It was uh, really, really crowded and uh, a lot of fun. By this point, I think my, my feet were killing me, so... 
Anyway, that is the Portland Retro Gaming Expo for 2015. Uh, if you're going to plan on going, I highly recommend it. I mean, it has expanded a great deal since last year. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, I did it in a single day, and to be honest, I think next time I'll go for two. But that's it for this year. So until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.